Did you know SpaceX is now retrofitting deep water oil rigs to convert them into floating launch pads for their enormous Starship rockets? But why are they trying to build a launch pad out of ocean oil rigs? Doesn't that make the launch even harder? Well, you'll find out in just a second. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel Futurefile to watch more fascinating videos on futuristic tech. SpaceX is trying everything in the realm of possibility to make rockets hyper-reusable. After experimenting with the idea of using a massive spaceship to carry people around Earth at hypersonic speeds a few years ago, the company is now working on developing floating offshore spaceports to launch these extremely heavy class vehicles and possibly act as a springboard to Mars. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, hinted at his company's plans to launch spacecraft from offshore platforms through his tweet that said, SpaceX is building floating super heavy class spaceports for Mars, Moon and hypersonic travel around Earth. In May 2021, Musk has announced that SpaceX is building a floating spaceport to support test flights in the ocean region off the coast of Texas in the United States that could possibly be ready for launch next year. Musk says, Ocean spaceport Deimos is under construction for launch next year. You might be familiar with Deimos and Phobos, as these are the names of Mars's moons. But they are also the new names of two retired oil rigs off the coast of Texas. These rigs were purchased by a SpaceX subsidiary named Lone Star Mineral Development in July 2020 for $3.5 million each from offshore drilling contractor Valaris. Well indeed an absolute steal compared to the original production cost between $330 and $515 million in 2008. And quite symbolic too, especially since SpaceX is taking something old that has caused many environmental problems and is using it to empower humanity. Musk has long been an environmentalist and his products are designed to have as little negative impact on the environment as possible. SpaceX is doing its part to ensure that building rockets aren't as damaging to the environment as it has been in the past, and recycling oil rigs add to the company's commitment to reuse the old whenever possible. Deimos and Phobos are both currently under construction to be converted into an ocean spaceport that will eventually serve as the launch and landing base for the company's rockets on reusable rocket space missions. These missions could include the Falcon 9, which has already launched hundreds of Starlink Constellation satellites into orbit. And even more importantly, Starship, a fully reusable stainless steel rocket designed to transport up to 100 people at once to Mars and beyond. But why launch these rockets from an ocean spaceport? Now anyone who has lived near an airport knows how terrible transportation noise can be. However, airplanes make far less noise than rockets. Rocket launches can be so loud that scientists have to make sure their sound waves don't knock over nearby buildings. To put that into perspective, a normal conversation is about 65 decibels. Sounds at 90 to 95 decibels are where humans start to experience hearing loss from sustained exposure. We start to experience pain at 125 decibels and louder. 140 decibels and up can quickly cause irreversible ear damage. In the case of Starship, the sound level is estimated to be around 112 decibels, even from 8 kilometers away. And as you move closer, the sound waves grow powerful enough to shatter windows and even cause structural damage. Musk says, yeah, occasional flights from land are okay, but frequent daily flights probably need around 30 kilometers, 18 miles clear area for noise. Well indeed, the Starship is likely to offer an impressive display when it launches, both in sight and sound. Although a spaceport located distant from cities makes perfect sense, it could limit the benefits of inter-Earth flights in terms of time savings. For instance, Beijing's Capital International Airport is 15.6 miles from the Forbidden City, and London's Heathrow Airport is 14.3 miles from Charing Cross. But bear in mind that this is only the distance between the city centre and the airport. Musk is talking about placing the spaceport 20 miles offshore, which could mean a much longer route. So the distance from London's Charing Cross and Southend-on-Sea, where the Thames meets the North Sea, is approximately 36 miles. That means, based on these very rough approximations, a London Starship spaceport would be at least 60 miles from the city centre. Furthermore, experts believe that while sea-based spaceports provide companies more flexibility, they also present logistical and regulatory challenges that land-based space operations do not. Sam Jimenez, founder and CEO of San Antonio headquartered XARC, Exploration Architecture, says, Offshore platforms are very beneficial for mitigating launch and landing risk in areas of high population density and lessens disruption to aviation airspace operations. 
It depends if the platform is located in international waters, for which regulatory regimes apply. And of course, the closer to shore, the easier the logistics. Modifying these platforms for launches and landings will certainly present several big challenges to the company. First will be the modifications themselves. All of the infrastructures on these rigs were designed with the idea of drilling for oil, thus it will have to be demolished. This will leave a large hole in the upper deck centre that will need to be filled. Then they will have to move everything that gets in the way of constructing the launch platform, which might include small buildings that house staff and equipment. Finally, they will need to construct structures to meet their requirements. All of this will most likely take place in the port of Brownsville and even Galveston, Texas. But that isn't the end of it. They will also have to tow the modified rigs out to sea. This is fairly common, but they are moving the rigs away from support and logistics in doing so. There are no natural gas mains, power lines or roads in the Gulf of Mexico, so they will need to figure out how they will get fuel out to the rigs that were designed to send fuel to land. Let's say they have measures to tackle all of these challenges, but that still leaves a lot of unanswered questions. Will SpaceX build starships at sea, or will they need to crane them up from a ship and onto the platforms? Also, will there be enough space on each platform to house many starships? We will eventually know this, but for now we can say Phobis and Deimos will be roughly equivalent to the Tesla Roadster version 1 in several aspects. Tesla started by partnering with Lotus to build vehicles, but eventually designed its own cars from the ground up. By purchasing these two used platforms, SpaceX will save a significant amount of money while learning the basics and will have a far better sense of what to expect when building their own later, assuming that is the path they will choose. But regardless of these future possibilities, both rigs are actively undergoing a refit to accommodate rocket launches. It is unclear where the launch pad Deimos will be situated, but the other rig, Phobis, is currently reported to be at Pascagoula, Mississippi. ST Engineering Holter Marine and Offshore Inc., a shipbuilding and repair company, is currently working on a six-month project to remove drilling equipment from the Phobis' oil rig. Jeffrey German, ST Engineering's Senior Vice President of Operations, says, SpaceX is here in Pascagoula. According to German, the oil rig was towed in from Galveston, Texas, after SpaceX phoned ST Engineering to inquire about the cost of removing the drilling equipment from the oil rig. Apparently, our number was better than our competitors, and they brought it to us, he says. German couldn't go into further details about the project due to a non-disclosure agreement with SpaceX. However, he did admit this has the potential of being huge. Well, we couldn't agree more. Musk and his team of engineers are always dreaming big and pushing the boundaries. Who would have guessed that oil rigs could be converted to spaceports? Naturally, Elon Musk. So what are your thoughts on SpaceX's ocean spaceport? Do you think they'll be able to launch Starship as early as next year? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you liked watching this video, you may also like to watch the video on why Starship looks so ugly, shown in the end screen. See you there.